I once heard a professional rodeo rider say that he learned more from his failures than from his successes. Well, the good news, if you can call it that, is that we had plenty of those failures in 2023. So let's take a look and see what we can learn from those so that we can do a better job going forward. I'm going to use, in particular, uh, the X-Force Threat Intelligence Index report for 2024, where it looks back at 2023 and identifies the major trends that we see in terms of threats. And we're going to take a look at identity and access management, data security, applications, and generative AI. And then at the end of the video, you want to stick around till then, I'm going to give you some recommendations on things we can do to avoid these threats going forward and actually put that learning into place. First of all, a little bit about the X-Force. So I mentioned this group. They're the ones that are the source of the report that we're going to be using here. X-Force is a global team from IBM. They operate in 170 different countries, and it's made up of ethical hackers, incident responders, researchers, and analysts, all coming together. They have a large empirical base of data, so when they say they see a trend, they're saying a trend that covers a lot of space. Okay, first up, in terms of our threat trends, is identity. And where we got a lot of information on this from the X-Force report was looking at the initial access vectors. In other words, these are the ways that someone tries to break into your system from the start. And what we found from this is that valid accounts or improper use of a valid account was in fact number one. In fact, it was tied with phishing for number one and only slightly behind all of this, uh, almost a round off error at 29% were public facing apps. So if you take all the different valid account types, that is local, domain, cloud, and group them together, you get about 30%. And you say, well, that's tied for phishing. Why did you list that one first? Here's why. We're concerned because we see over the previous year a 71% increase in this particular area. So that means, again, the bad guys are focusing in on credentials. Now let's take a look a little bit deeper into the phishing. So there's usually different types of phishing attacks, and generally we grouped out in the report those that involve attachments and those that involve sending links. Well, what are those things intending to do? In some cases, it's to plant malware on your system. In other cases, it's to steal your credentials. And in fact, if you think about it, a lot of this malware that gets put on systems, its purpose is to steal credentials as well. So a large portion of all of this is really about leveraging valid accounts, even though it may be phishing attacks. So you take some of these together and you can combine this and then see that the bad guys really are coming after your creds. And that's because they have learned it's a lot easier to log in than it is to hack in. Okay, let's take a look at the top impact item to organizations, and that's where data security comes in. In particular, what we found is that data theft and data leakage amounted to 32% of the top impact to organizations. And what's particularly concerning about that number is that it's an increase from 19% the previous year in 2022. So we're not getting better at preventing theft and leakage of data. And how is this happening? Well, it turns out it somewhat corresponds to what we also see as a rise in this stuff called info stealers. What is an info stealer? Okay, let's take, here is a user and they've got their data here on their system. And we've got a bad guy here. And he is going to send some sort of info stealer software. So this is some form of malware that either they're going to send in an email, they may send in a link to the good guy who clicks and then that causes a download to occur. They might even put it out in a, a publicly available app and poison the app with this info stealer capability. So what happens is uh, this guy downloads or receives the information and infects their system. Once it's infected, then the execution occurs and it goes and grabs information. Now, what could it get? It could get sensitive information that's important to the organization. It might also, by the way, steal credentials. So that's another particular use of info stealers. Then once it collects that information, it sends it back to the bad guy. So pretty simple concept, but we've seen, uh, in the, and that's the exfiltration step of that. But what we've seen is that this has gone up 
in the range of 266% InfoStealer increases. That's why we think we're seeing a lot of this data theft. Okay, let's take a look at trends in application security in particular. So we took a look at, in the X-Force report, the OWASP. That's the Open Worldwide Application Security Project. They produce a top 10 list of application security vulnerabilities. Very well respected, very well done piece of work. So what we did with our X-Force report was take a look at which ones of those are we seeing the most frequently in the real world. And it turned out, number one, was misconfiguration. That is, you set up a system and you didn't configure it correctly. You didn't change some of the defaults as you should have. Uh, you left exposed services, a number of things like that that can go on. In fact, I did a video on exactly this topic, so you can take a look at that if you'd like. Number two on this list was identity and authentication failures. That is areas where we, we didn't, we set really poor passwords or we left the defaults in place. This was also a big one. Remember this theme that keeps coming up again and again is identity is one of the big things that we're having failures in. And then also related, access control. This is what came in number three at 15%. Now, what's interesting to me again with the identity theme, we take those two together, we're gonna get 36% that are basically identity and access management related things. So if you group those together, they actually move up to the number one category. Again, identity is a overriding theme of failures in 2023, and therefore things that we should learn on and improve on in the future. More about that in a few minutes. But we did have some good news. Security people, we tend to be able to find the dark cloud in every silver lining, but I'm going to give you a silver lining for a second. We did have a few good things. For instance, zero-day attacks. These are the ones where there's a vulnerability in an application, for instance, or an operating system, and there's no patch. So you're just exposed in these cases. In, in the case of zero days, which are particularly terrifying to cybersecurity folks like me, uh, we actually had a decrease, a significant decrease in 2023 over 2022. It was down 72%. Wow, that sounds like reason for celebration. Well, maybe not, because the, the thought is the reason that they, these were down was because this stuff was so darn easy to do, they didn't need to do the more exotic type of attacks. These are a lot more difficult to develop and, and figure those things out. But again, if you can log in, it's a lot easier than trying to hack in. So that may be a false indicator of success. Ransomware. Now, this is one that's been bothering a lot of organizations these days. We actually saw a slight decrease of 12% in ransomware in real-world cases. Again, is this reason for celebration? Well, maybe, maybe not. I would say take a look at this number the next year and make sure that the trend continues. Now, what I hope is that it will. And what we have seen is some early indications that some of the larger organizations are doing a better job of defending against ransomware attacks in the first place. So they're starting to get the message, which is a positive sign. Another positive sign is organizations are beginning more and more not to pay the ransom. Why does that matter? Well, if I'm a ransomware attacker and I know I'm not going to get paid, well, there's really no point in launching this attack. If everyone stopped paying, there wouldn't be any more reason for ransomware. So those two trends, if they continue, might continue helping this, but keep an eye on this. I'm just going to say the battle is far from won in this case. Now, the final topic I'm going to take a look at is generative AI. Well, as everybody knows, 2023 was the year that we launched chatbots and generative AI came onto the scene in a big way. It really launched at the end of 2022, but 2023 was when most people really uh, became aware of it and started leveraging that kind of technology. So this looked like to a lot of people, a new attack vector. The good news is we haven't seen a ton of attacks yet from generative AI. Yet is the key word because what we have seen by monitoring dark web forums is 800,000 mentions in 2023 about AI and generative AI and ChatGPT and things like this. So the bad guys are talking about this. They're experimenting with it. If you think about it this way, so are the good guys. 
we're all trying to learn and assimilate what this new technology means and what we can do with it. The good guys are doing that. The bad guys are doing it too. So this is one where, uh, the, again, the story is not fully told. This level of activity indicates we may yet still see something coming in the future. And by the way, if you say, well, chatbots have gotten better about locking down so that you can't just have it generate an attack for you. Uh, and, and generally that's true for the very well-respected chatbots, but there are alternatives. Alternative chatbots that don't have any restrictions on them at all. If you ask them to write malware, they will do it. If you ask them to write phishing attacks, they will do it and they will not complain. So even though we're trying to lock down the respectable ones, some of these others, rogue ones, will always be out there. So the bottom line, as my little friend here has to say about generative AI, stay tuned. At the beginning of the video, I said we would learn more from our failures than from our successes. And as you can see, 2023 has given us an ample uh, set of things we can learn from. So that's the good news, I guess. Well, there's actually other good news in here as well. We looked at all of these things that were attacks on critical infrastructure, and we found that 84% of those attacks could have been prevented by using some of the industry best practices. The things that in fact have been tried and true methods. We don't have to do anything exotic or figure something out. We just need to do what we know we should be doing. And what are some of those things? So I'm gonna give you some recommendations that will help protect you and your organization. Remember, identity was the big area here. Uh, as they say, it's the new perimeter. And the bad guys figured it's easier to log in than hack in. Well, that's because we've made it too easy for them. How could we make that harder for them? Well, one thing we could do is start to leverage something like multi-factor authentication. You know, use something not just that you know, like a password, but something you have, like a phone that's been pre-registered, and something you are, like a biometric. Those things make it harder on the bad guys to log in. And something else, what's even better than a really strong password? How about no password at all? How about using a passkey based on the FIDO industry standard? I did a video on that. This allows us to eliminate the need for users to remember these complex passwords, which they always forget, or end up simplifying, and, and, uh, and then the bad guys are able to guess them. A passkey is a much stronger way of doing this, and it's actually use easier for the user to do as well. How about in terms of data? What can we do to secure our data? Well, the most obvious thing is encrypt it. If I encrypt it, then if a ransomware attack occurs and they say, I've got your data and I'm about to give it to the world, we say, okay, go ahead, knock yourself out because you can't read it and neither will anybody else be able to read it because we encrypted it well. And then the other type of ransomware attack mainly is where the guy says, I'm gonna take your data and I'm not gonna give it back to you unless you pay me. And in that case, again, we can say, why don't you go ahead and get lost? Because in fact, I've got a good backup for all of my data, an immutable backup. So it can't be overwritten whenever the ransomware hits. The backup is still pure and pristine. So these things will help us in these data-oriented attacks. And how about with applications? Well, again, the, the things that we know we need to do, we need to patch applications and operating systems. Keep them up to the latest level of, of software because what happens many cases is there are security patches that go in to those uh, software updates as well. So if we're patched, we're in much more uh, uh, secure state. Also harden these systems. That is, remove the defaults, change them, turn off unneeded services, change all the default passwords and user IDs and things like that. That will make our applications more secure. And when it comes to generative AI, the bad guys are learning about this, so should we. We need to be learning about how this technology works, how it can be used, and how it can be abused. So keep studying this. Keep staying on top of it. If you do these kinds of things, you'll be following these industry best practices, and you'll do a much better job of keeping yourself secure. Two things before you go. One, download the report. Here you can get a link and read the details and find out more about what we learned in our research. And the second thing, dust off your crystal ball. Tell us what you think is going to be in next year's report and put it in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting and would like to learn more about cybersecurity, please remember to hit like and subscribe to this channel.